been together and for she... 10 years. What you expected? He wasn't gonna never leave me. Girl, girl stop. No, you stop. No, you, you stop. You want to sit here and tell me to stop. But you 19, 19 years, years old. You, you know, sweetheart, I'm 21 up to the ass. Hold on. I'm one at a time. At After an on and off relationship with the defendant for eight years, Ms. Hoddle finally decided to call it quits. She was furious that the defendant was no longer willing to accept her and her child and is in court today to try to prove to him that he is the father of her child. The case began like this. Ms. Hadle, after eight years off and on with the defendant, the two of you called it quits just three months ago because he denies your one-year-old daughter, Amarella. Now, you want to prove to him that he is her biological father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. We have had a rough road throughout these seven and a half years, uh, nine months into our relationship. Mm. It seems like they both have reasons not to trust each other. Now, all this while, the defendant, Mr. Andrews, was not treating her child with the same love he showed his other kids. In his defense, he claimed he couldn't trust Ms. Haddle, and he had an exhibit to show why. No, it's not right. That's due to the things that she didn't say had done. She told me two different names that my child could be somebody else's child. So how can I trust that? Then at the same time, I received a test message. Hold on. You brought an exhibit. Correct. Is that what is contained in the exhibit, that yes. information? Yes, it is. Um, I let you have it any time, and now, you, now you're chicken, you're scared to come over. Ms. Hadle, is that what these text messages no. said? Uh, I can't tell you word for word. It was I sexual. I know word for word. At least she didn't deny the fact that she was having sexual conversations with another man. However, Mr. Andrew was not done explaining the reasons why he felt he could not be the father. Trust me. The next piece of evidence is going to blow your mind out of your brain. Take a look. So next piece of evidence, you jumped out of the window at 3 a.m. Correct. Who jumped out the window? She did. I was trying to get free from him. But see, but see, the whole He's thing crazy. is, she leave the house every time. It's always when a private car come, or it's after 3 a.m. That's the only time he able to get away from his wife, so-called. What? It was that said. Oh, wow. Ms. Haddle is one sneaky little woman, all right? Who sneaks out of their house by 3 in the morning? Moving on, Ms. Haddle told the judge that over time she changed and was trying to be a faithful woman to the the defendant, but the judge was not buying that. She then went on to drop this truth bomb. How were you being a good woman? And look, I'm not saying he was perfect either, because I'm right. getting to you next. No doubt. Um, <laughs> but how were you being a good woman? And you admit that you were on the phone with men, getting text messages, going out, finding comfort, flying out the window at 3 a.m. This was after eight, seven and a half years. Like, this stuff built up. It was more or less, you d you're doing this to me. Three children outside of their relationship? Come on, Mr. Andrew, that's a bit far. Even Judge Lauren couldn't hide her disappointment. Anyway, Mr. Andrew still wasn't done with his list of evidence. He had more to show the judge, and this was the next one on his list. Three children? Let me get back to this exhibit. Hmm. Found a condom so in the car. At least I was using protection and it ain't <laughs> no one else. Do that. Uh, but she know I'm the one who take my daughter to daycare every morning. I don't want to get the dress, take daycare every morning. The dirty people couldn't even take the condom and throw it away. If you find a condom in the car. So and wait. I showed you. I bet you weren't expecting that evidence. After all the evidence was displayed, Judge Lauren turned to Ms. Haddle and asked her to defend herself. She began by saying that she wasn't feeling enough comfort and security in the relationship, and that's why she cheated. And out of spite, she just go to run in her mouth, and when she get mad, she will tell her herself. He's full of it. But and I apologize, Hunter. She, told me, two, she uh, told me two other men was dead. His mouth. Which I, which, which from I the time already, I wake up which, in which the morning, from the time I go to sleep, does anyway, not stop. Already, and all he does all damn though. day is talk, 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 talk on you, about just, how bad of a person that I am. So when I went out and cheated on him, Judge Lauren sure wasn't buying her story, and she made it very clear. In no time, Mr. Andrew and Ms. Haddle got into an unending argument about how they were both at fault for the situation they were currently in. Believe me, at some point, all the judge could do was sit back and watch them rant. As I stated, May 2014, when I got with him again, as in, let's work it out, we were planning to have a child because I, I wanted a boy. You so why, you wouldn't, uh, why would I sleep around with you other people us. if I'm in love with him and I'm trying to make no, it work? No, you wasn't. You were in love so, with the other guy. Okay. All right. Oh, she has had enough of both of them. It got so bad that she had to give them a scolding session. All they did in the courtroom was argue about who was cheating and who wasn't cheating. What was even more upsetting was that they never mentioned their child at all. So either way, it's not right. And I want this to be done and over with so that we can move on. At least my kids will know um, everything that daddy was saying about mommy is wrong. I mean, it, 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 and then it, let's be honest, stop talking. You can't be proud of yourselves. The situation is hideous. It's just listening to you all. I can only imagine what these children have witnessed and what they've heard. 
Oh well, it doesn't look like these two are ready to reach an agreement and find a way out of their messy situation. Let's see if the DNA results will reveal the truth they have refused to tell the judge. Here is the verdict. Mr. Andrews, you are the father. You, you have tears in your eyes. How do you feel in this moment? I love, I love her regardless. It's my daughter's sister, so it didn't make me no different if I was or wasn't. I just wanted to... Oh, it didn't? Yes, it did. I'm tired of you talking in circles, Mr. Andrews. In this case, Ms. Martinez claimed that her family had hit a roadblock when the defendant, Mr. Hernandez, decided to deny both of her children. She was in court to prove to the defendant that he was the father of both her children. The whole situation began like this. Ms. Martinez, you say your family is torn apart since the defendant has denied both of your children, four-year-old Richard II and three-year-old Renee. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. You're currently behind more than $6,000 in child support and refund refuse to care for either child until it is proven that you are their biological father. Yes, Your Honor. He had better have a solid for neglecting those kids of the fatherly love they deserve. Clearly, they have a lot of figuring out to do because their relationship is a mess. The judge then proceeded to ask them how their relationship started in the first place. Mr. Hernandez took the floor by saying this. Uh, we first met, she was trying to go out, get all over me or whatever from the beginning, try, but I ignored her. Okay. And what were your intentions, Mr. Hernandez? It started getting serious. I mean, well, I felt like it was, and I don't know, I wanted to be with her. All of a sudden, I find out she's doing other things with my friends and stuff. Doing other things like? like it's a one incident he's talking about, Your Honor. It was a one-time thing. Hmm. Let's just say Ms. Martinez was not ready to be in a relationship, and Mr. Hernandez would not take no for an answer. Now, here's where things get really intense. A couple of weeks before she got pregnant, she got intimate with one of Mr. Hernandez's friends, and all hell broke loose. Okay, let me tell you about that, Your Honor. We were still on and off, right? I called her, and she's like, I'm with this person, which is my friend. And I was like, okay. Next day, I talked to her. She's like, okay, yeah, I did have intercourse with this man. I forgave her. And a few weeks later, she finds out she's pregnant. Yeah, is he... that true, Ms. Martinez? Were yes, you intimate is. with another man a yes, few Your weeks Honor. before you told him you were pregnant? Yes, I did have intercourse with him three times. She might have been sleeping around, but he had no right to call her that. Judge Lauren was going to lose her temper if he didn't check his tone. After going back and forth about the conception dates and when she conceived, Mr. Hernandez went on to drop this truth bomb. Uh, they induced me on my uh, due Which date. Which gives me doubts And then I too. had to have an emergency C-section right after. In your mind, you say this is his child. Yes. In your mind, Mr. Hernandez, you're saying, I'm thinking back to a few weeks before that when she admitted to me she was intimate with somebody else. Yes. And I'm also thinking about the fact that this uh, birth, this date has been induced. It's not the natural birth date. Wow. She actually told him the baby was not his. That would have been a hard pill to swallow. Now, Mr. Harnadaz claimed that after she dropped that bombshell on him, he didn't want to have anything to do with her anymore. But before he could finish his statement, Ms. Martinez stopped him and said this. You didn't show back up to the hospital in time. You got angry. And I said, that's why you're not the father. But once she said that, Mr. Hernandez, then all your bells start ringing. Yes. But and see, Your Honor, I don't it, see how he can say that. It pushed me to the point where I didn't even want to be there for her no more. At the surgery, I didn't want to. I didn't want to see my son anymore. I didn't. I didn't want to be with her. Your I didn't Honor, be there he around does them. this flip flop every other day. He's begging for his family one day. Ms. Martinez might be speaking facts. If he does not believe the kids are his, why did he sign the birth certificate? Moving on, Mr. Hernandez's doubts had taken over his mind. They got so bad that the judge had to tell him the truth to his face. What does that have to do anything? Exactly. You think she slept with your friends? Yes, Your Honor. M and now the kids look like them. Yes, they, they, they look like everybody. Them, there's, there's something different about them every single day. Kids change every day. I understand this. Ms. Martinez, how does what, this affect these kids? The way this is acting. what I'm worried about. They had, they, does he say this out loud? Yes, he tells them to their face that, oh, you want to go see your father? Um, and he'll say his friend's name. Ugh! Does he even want to be the father of these kids? Because it sure doesn't feel like he does. Trying to prove to the judge why he still had heavy doubts about being the father. He went on to say that after she gave birth to the second child, his friend showed up and said this. Okay, Your Honor. Well, with our second son, we were at the hospital. The man that she named after him, just all of a sudden, as soon as he's born, called me and says, hey, I'm, I'm outside. And I was like, whoa, how, how did this man even Call me right now. I haven't spoke to him in months. Why would he even call me? Why would he even be outside? 
I get down there, I'm talking to him. He wants to come upstairs and, hey, can, can I see your son? Well, you didn't do this with my first son. Why would you want to? That's a very valid question. What was he thinking signing all the birth certificates if he had this much doubt? That's not how it's done. Hearing all of that, Judge Lauren had no choice but to scold him once again. And she began like this. Well, I But you signed birth, you signed birth certificates. Yes. And then you voluntarily don't participate. I do so you're in arrears in more ways than one. When she asks of it, I will do it. But most of the time, she doesn't even call me and ask me and say, hey, I, don't, I need this or she that. She shouldn't have to call you. Thank you. You signed the birth certificate. <laughs> See, Mr. Hernandez, this is why I'm being tough on you. Let's pray all she said gets to his head, or he might end up in her courtroom again. Enough of their drama, wouldn't you say? The results are finally ready to be revealed. And now we'll know if Mr. Harnadatas' doubts were valid after all. Mr. Hernandez, you are his father. So you are the legal father and the biological father. Like I said. Of both boys. So can you step up now? I can. What I've heard in this courtroom through this testimony as to what has been said and what has transpired in front of these children is shameful. It's deplorable. For this couple, everything was hanging in the balance. Mr. Mason claimed he had spies who caught his wife having affairs with multiple men outside of their relationship. And now he doubts he is the father of their one-year-old child. He began his case like this and... Mr. Mason, you say today will determine the future of your relationship with the defendant, Ms. Malone. Uh, you say you lost all trust when you set up a watchdog to keep tabs on Ms. Malone and discovered that she had men coming in and out of the house while you were at work. And now you believe one-year-old Avery is not your daughter. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Their relationship actually kicked off with a really good start. Along the line, their relationship got a little wishy-washy, and the very sweet relationship they once had became a nightmare they couldn't wait to get out of. Um, I found out that she was doing a lot of sneaking around when I was in the house. What kind and of sneaking? Going through the alleys, meeting people. In the alleys? In, in people's cars. You were walking in the alleys, Ms. Malone? Yes, I was sneaking around, in fact. But there was a break. You were sneaking around doing what? Seeing other guys. Living together, and they claim to be on a break in their relationship. Like Judge Lauren asked, how do we that work? Anyway, Judge Lauren then asked Mr. Mason to explain what he meant when he said the defendant, Ms. Malone, was sneaking around. He started by saying this. I had somebody tell me that she was going out the back door and down the alley to jump in somebody's car. I was actually coaching a local cheerleading team in our city and a guy had came to pick me up to take me to our gang that we had that day it was no relations it was uh we were strictly friends and that was it ah she finally comes out with the truth it looks like she still wanted to have some fun before settling down with mr mason after ms malone revealed the shocking truth mr mason went on to tell the court that he had hired a spy to monitor his wife while she was sneaking out of the house i had a friend watching my front door who lived right across from where we lived at. Oh, you had a watchdog, right. Yes, Your Honor, every time I went to work. She blamed it on because me and her wasn't having any intimacy or anything like that. Do you remember that confrontation, Ms. Malone? Yes, Your Honor. And then what did you respond? I told him that it was my father that came to the door. And he actually asked my father, and my father said, yes, I came over there that day. Oh, wow. So, Ms. Malone wasn't riding the bus with only one man. She must really love to explore. To complicate the whole situation, Ms. Malone was sleeping with both the other guy and Mr. Mason during the window of conception. Okay, so let me say this. When it comes to the window of conception, that's what's relevant as it relates to the paternity. So, when you cheated, when you were out with this other person, was that during the window of conception? Yes, Your Honor, it was. So, when you found out you were pregnant, did you tell the other guy it could possibly be his child as well? Yes, Your Honor. At least she was honest with Mr. Mason about her sleeping with the other guy, but she wasn't completely honest. Even though she told Mr. Mason she was intimate with another man, he claimed that she did not particularly tell him to his face. This was how he found out like this. I had to find out about the other guy um, from waking up out of my sleep. Your Honor. No, Your Honor, I, he did I, not. I what happened? I overheard a conversation between her and another individual about she found the other guy on a website and how much Avery and the other guy and the other guy's child 
look just alike. Could you really blame him for reacting that way? I mean, he just had the worst news of his life. What was she really expecting? Now Mr. Mason wasn't done revealing why he had doubts about being the father of the child in question. Trust me, there were more truth bombs to be told. Your Honor, at first it was two guys that popped up at our doorstep saying they were Avery's father. What? There was a guy that came to the doorstep. You said that I had That I had relations with. And you narrowed down to um, one. But we actually wore protection, so he was out the question. Well, you can't argue with that. The babies don't look like Mr. Mason, but they sure look like their mother. Enough was heard from Mr. Mason and Ms. Malone, and the judge decided to hear from a third party. She asked Ms. Malone's mom to come into the court, and this was what she had to say. Uh, I have to ask you, do you believe Mr. Mason is your granddaughter's biological father? No, I do not, because they were on a break when she was conceived. And I knew that my child was seeing someone else because they were on a break. To me, she doesn't look like him. And I was in the room when she was born. Hmm. It doesn't look like Ms. Malone's mom is a fan of Mr. Mason, but that was not the only shocking thing to be revealed in the courtroom. Apparently, Ms. Malone happens to be six months pregnant. And just like the child in question, Mr. Mason does not believe he is the father. Because in the court papers, it says that Ms. Malone mm -hmm. is currently pregnant again. Oh. Yeah, yeah. How far along are you, Ms. Malone? Um, I'm six months, Your Honor. Is there a question as to the paternity of this child as well? Yes, Your Honor. He doesn't think that the unborn is his. In my opinion, these two need couples therapy because this is just one big ass mess. Well, you know what time it is. The only way out of this situation is to reveal the truth hiding in the DNA results. Mr. Mason, you are not her father. What are you feeling in this moment, sir? I'm mad, Your Honor, but I can't be really mad about something that I already knew. Mr. Mason, you are the father. Mrs. Simmons was in court claiming that the defendant, Mr. Burgess, begged her to have his child. And the moment she told him she was pregnant with his child, he turned his back on her and disappeared. The court case began like this. Ms. Simmons, you claim that the defendant begged you to have his baby, but then disappeared when you told him you were pregnant. Yeah. So you're here to prove to Mr. Burgess and his fiance that he is your son's father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. He was talking online at first and we was talking over the phone and he had told me he was single and everything. And then we eventually started, I had came to his house. Hmm. Looks like Mr. Burgess lied his way into kicking it in bed with Ms. Simmons. Diving right into the drama of the case, Judge Lauren asked Mr. Burgess how frequently their sexual adventures occurred. He claimed it wasn't a lot, but Ms. Simmons called him a fat ass liar. How often did you have sex, Ms. Simmons? We was always having sex. That's not true, Yana. When I met online, we I, I talked to her once or twice. I got her number and we went from there. And she came over maybe once or twice. You a liar. Started three, three times probably a week for you, up to like, between you two to three months. No, you a liar. I was over there like yeah. almost every day. From Ms. Simmons' confession, they seemed to be kicking it in bed a lot. Now, while Ms. Simmons was dropping her truth bombs, she claimed any time they had sex, the condoms were always breaking. So, Judge Lauren decided to ask Mr. Burgess why he felt he could not be the father. And this was his response. Sex with her, and she says the condom was continuously breaking to the point where you all just stopped using them. How is it that you can definitively say that you are not Malachi's biological father. He only saying it because uh, she's here. No, I ain't saying that. So yes, you believe, Miss Simmons, that he's just saying this to protect the relationship, to try to yes, save the relationship? Like he only doing that because at the end day, first of all, he was like, oh, we don't need no DNA test. Well, at least he was honest. Anyway, after Mr. Burgess was done explaining his doubts, Judge Lauren then asked Miss Simmons if she had told Mr. Burgess about the pregnancy the moment she found out. Oh, the man asked me, even though we was having sex at the time, he was like, I want you to have my baby. I want I want to have no. a daughter because I already have a son. Yeah, yeah. And I want you to have my daughter because I'm a lie. You use a lie. She's lying. No, you use a lie. So anyways, the day I took the pregnancy test, um, I had sent him a picture of the two pregnancy tests I took. So he was taking too long in response. So I had called him. And when I spoke on the phone with him, I was crying because I was like, you know, I'm just starting to get into my life. I had just, I was going to school. Did he just say he didn't know her real name? Oh, come on, Mr. Burgess. I don't believe that for a second. When he found out about the baby, as you would expect, he was going to accept the child. He told Ms. Sim that the baby could not be his and that she needed to find the real father. I said, uh, I was like, who baby that is? That for real? 
I was like, that ain't my baby. I'm saying, I said, we're going to have to find out. You know what I'm saying? That's what I told her. Because, you know, I wasn't finna take care of no child that ain't mine. You know what I'm saying? Well, you ain't take care of him now. Yeah, He's yours, talk. so. Real talk. I wasn't finna take care of nobody else's baby if it ain't mine. Were he you yours. supportive you know, during the pregnancy? Stupid. I wasn't there. No, he wasn't there at all. Look, he left after I told him that I was pregnant. A month later, look, he was gone. Have a she didn't he have was a gone. Phone. If we're being honest, that's not surprising. I mean, he doesn't want to be the father, so why would he stick around? The drama was getting very intense, and Judge Lauren felt she needed to hear from Mr. Burgess's fiance. When she walked to the podium, this was what she had to say. How did you find out about Miss Simmons? I found out she about her. Remember through. his phone? I went through his phone. He came to Alabama to visit me one weekend, but I noticed the whole time that when he was there, his phone was off. So it came to the point to where we had to take him to the bus station to catch his bus to get back to Atlanta. So he had to charge his phone up. But as soon as it comes on, two text messages pop up. He ended up falling asleep. The fiance and baby mama get on the phone. That never goes well in any situation. After his fiance had a conversation with Ms. Simmons, she decided to confront Mr. Burgess about the situation, and that did not go well either. My cousin been using my phone, so it's probably somebody he know. I called from my, my phone first. She didn't answer. Okay. So I called from his phone. I asked her who was she and what was going on between her and Chris, and she went to the fact of, man, you tripping. What you worried about it for? Ask him. So I said, no, I That's called you. That's who your relationship with, with. So Ask I him. said, no. No, I'm ask you. So I guess she hung up, but any kind of wish. Mr. Burgess is in the hot seat now, that's for sure. In no time, baby mama and the fiance get into a brawl, and trust me, it's not a nice one. Mr. Burgess's fiance tells the judge that she told Mr. Burgess that the baby was his, but Ms. Simmons called her a liar, and this is how it played out. Oh, is court for the paternity because of the fact that Chris and I, I kept telling him that this is his child. No, you did. Of what, no, you did. You, you don't know what know. I tell him. No, you, you did. don't know what I, I tell him. I know what you him. sent to my phone. That's, that's what, what I, I sent to your that's phone, but you don't know what I tell him. Well, at this the end of the day, don't see him. I've been with him. Okay, I know this. Also, we both can't been with him. She can't I'm tell. With she can't speak on nothing. Let's see if her decision to marry Mr. Burgess still stands if the baby ends up being his child. Anyway, the DNA results are sitting pretty with the judge, and the truth is ready to be unleashed. Let's see who the father of the child is. Mr. Burgess. You are the father. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Miss Simmons, don't 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 clown. Don't clown. I'm sorry. Don't clown. I'm sorry. 